Let me situate Rawls' theory in the context of what was going on in ethics in Anglo-American philosophy at the time he was writing. For the first 70 or 80 years of the 20th century, Anglo-American ethical philosophy tended to be dominated by two perspectives, utilitarianism and Kantianism. Okay. Roughly speaking, utilitarianism is the perspective that says that whether or not certain actions are right or wrong is entirely determined by the consequences, not any feature of the act itself. Okay. So if we talk about something like rights, some utilitarians may dismiss the idea of rights. Now, other utilitarians will say, well, there are rights, but the nature of them and the limits of them is determined entirely by the consequences of certain types of action. So, for example, if we ask the question, is it okay to betray a friend? Utilitarians will either say, well, sometimes yes, sometimes no. It depends on what's at stake. And if you ask, well, why is it usually wrong to betray a friend? They'll say, because it tends to produce worse consequences than other alternatives. Now, if you ask a Kantian, they're going to say, well, it's not all about consequences. There's just something bad about betraying a friend, full stop. Maybe it's justified in certain circumstances. Okay? So maybe there are times in which there's something important at stake, extremely important, that could justify betraying a friend. If the friend's a Nazi, for example. You might be obligated to betray that friend. But nevertheless, it has to be something really big like that. The mere fact that betraying your friend would produce more good than the other options available to you is not enough to justify betraying a friend. There's something about that action. There's something about treating the person in that way that's bad in itself or usually wrong in itself. Right? So we don't have to stop and ask in 99% of cases, well, what would the consequences be? Right? In 99% of cases, the consequences are irrelevant. The mere fact that you'd be betraying a friend makes it wrong. Right? Rawls is definitely a Kantian. Okay? In fact, there's a famous line from the first chapter of his first book, Theory of Justice, that illustrates this perspective. He says, each person possesses an inviolability founded on justice that even the welfare of society as a whole cannot override. Okay. Now, what does this mean? Well, let me give you an example. Okay. I had a friend who was a nurse who trained many nurses. Right? She was a very, very accomplished professional. And she said to me once, men tend to make bad nurses. And she gave various reasons for that based on her experience and things she's observed. Okay. Now, let's suppose for the sake of argument that she's right. And suppose that someone showed conclusive proof that it would be better for the health and welfare of the nation of the whole if we completely banned men from the nursing profession. Now, yes, there are men that are excellent nurses, right? no doubt. Right? But people would say, but the screening is too difficult. Right? Here's solid evidence that the country as a whole would be healthier and more prosperous if we banned men from nursing. And so they've just got to make the sacrifice. Well, a Kantian might say, but no, that's wrong. When men are qualified to be nurses, they should be able to be nurses. Right? Yes, on the whole, going through the screening process might cost more than the benefits. Right? But we've got to do it because it would be wrong to treat the male candidates for being nurses in that way. Okay. So Rawls is a Kantian. Now, I'd say more than that. Some people will argue that prior to Rawls, during the 20th century, prior to Rawls, utilitarianism was the dominant perspective in Anglo-American philosophy. And Rawls changed that. Right? Kantianism rose and really, in many ways, passed up. Utilitarianism is now, as far as I can tell, more of a minority perspective. Right? Kantianism is more dominant. Right? Now, other perspectives have also risen up, such as virtue ethics. Okay, so things have been more complicated. Right? But Rawls really changed Anglo-American philosophy in that respect.